Whether this is your first time to church in person, first time tuning in online, something you need to know is that God is alive, He loves you, and He created you to be in relationship with Him. And with your eyes closed and your heart just focused on Him, because He's alive, He's present in this room. And you are never meant to live without Him. That's why at Christmas time we sing about Emmanuel, God with us. And so God wants to be with you. And He knocks, the Bible says, on the door of your heart. And my question to you here, before I get into preaching, is, is God knocking on your heart right now? Maybe you're singing this, I'm coming back and I need you, there's nothing more. And you're like, man, I never thought I'd be saying those words. But you feel like that you're coming to God, that you're drawing close to God. So with every eye closed and focusing on Jesus, we just took communion together. And in this moment, you're like, I would like to invite Jesus to come into my heart, to have a relationship with Him to live every day of my life in relationship with God, in a personal, real, and unique way. Maybe someone has never made that decision before and I'm giving you that opportunity right now. It's the most important decision that you and I will ever make. So in a moment with eyes closed in the room and online, you're focusing on God, in a moment I'm going to ask you to raise your hand to say, hey, I want to be included in a prayer that invites Jesus into my heart. And then after that, we're going to pray together as a church. And that's it. It's a prayer of faith. Or maybe God's knocking on someone's heart here and you're someone that's walked with God before, but you found that you've departed from God, deviated from God, you found you've walked away from God, and you too might want to raise your hand and you might want to be included in this prayer. I just ask the Christians to be praying right now. And if you're watching online, the way you do that is there will be a, I, I raise my hand button in the comment section, you can click that. So who is that? When nobody looking around, you're in this room and you're like, yeah, that's me. You know what? I feel God knocking on my heart to have a relationship with me. And I want to pray this prayer. I want to make my life right with God. Who is that in this room? Raise your hand. And online, click the I rate. Thank you. I see it. You can put your hand down. Is there anybody else? Amen. Just get a little bit more house light so I can acknowledge the hands. Is there anybody else in the room? Thank you, Jesus. Just raise your hand up nice and high. Thank you, Lord. You're like, yeah, that's me. I want to come back to God. I want to recommit my life to God. If you're watching online, I believe that there are people responding right now. Wherever you're watching around the world, I saw another hand go up. That's awesome. Who else wants to join these two hands? You're like, yeah, that's me. I want to have a relationship with God. Thank you. I saw another hand. You can put it down. The reason I'm telling you that there are other people is so that you know that you're not alone. Sometimes the fear of being the only one stops us from responding in this moment. Even if you were the only one, respond. But I thank God that we're not doing life alone. I thank God that we're in community. Is there anybody else? Just another quick moment. Yeah, I want to have a relationship with God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. We'll look this way. Let's pray this prayer. Actually, close your eyes. We should close our eyes when we pray. Keeps us focused on God. And online, pray this prayer with faith. Say, dear Jesus, I thank you that you died on a cross for me. Heal me. Forgive me. Make me new. Help me follow you as my Savior and my Lord from this moment on. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. 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 So if you're watching online, 
And you're one of those people that responded after the service is over. There will, there will be people that will uh, that are there to pray with you, and you can just click the. There will be a prayer thing that will come up, and so that's these. These are these little private chats where um, people you can tell them your personal story, and that would be awesome. And uh, and for anybody in the room. Pastor Jerry, when he gets up at the end, will talk about going to Next Steps, which is another room over there. There's a couple of snacks there for you, and and uh, and that would be a great place uh, for us to get to know you. Amen. We'll turn around to somebody, give them a high five. You can be seated. You can be seated. Well, this is awesome. I am uh, I'm excited about today. I'm excited uh, about what God's going to do today. We are one church in two locations, so I'm staring at the camera right now because I'm speaking to C3 Hamilton. Amen. Come on, everybody in Toronto, give them a huge round of applause. Amen. Uh, so uh, anybody watching online and C3 Hamilton, it's so awesome that you're here. Uh, what God is doing in Hamilton just excites me. Uh, we just hear amazing stories every single week. And we had the men's brekkie yesterday and just uh, connecting with different members uh, of the C3 Hamilton community shows me the quality of the people that are gathering together in Hamilton gives us insight into what God is setting up for the future. And I want to tell you, it's God's top shelf people are gathering together, people of faith, uh, people that are believing uh, uh, for the future of what God is doing in Hamilton. And I said this last week, Hamilton, part of the strategy of, of feeling God's call to Hamilton is uh, just the surge of growth that's going on in that city and the need. The, uh, when, when you drive through the streets in Hamilton, and you would know this, yeah, and you look around the communities, you just see an immense amount of need for the kingdom of God uh, in that city. And, and God is really doing something there. Uh, the, the community is growing. A lot of immigration there. It's the fourth fastest growing tech industry in all of North America, faster growing uh, than uh, Seattle and Silicon Valley. And, and it's crazy. Like, and, and the stats uh, about what uh, you know, what is happening to the uh, dynamics of that region, and it's super awesome. And I want to always make sure that we as a church are on the front line of what God is doing. And, uh, and, and I'm just so excited. And pray for your pastors, Pastor Greg and Vanessa uh, in Hamilton. Their family uh, has uh, un undergoing, I know Vanessa's watching online right now, but uh, little Haley, their baby, uh, was having seizures last night, and I know they wouldn't uh, mind me sharing this. But never forget to pray for your pastors. Never forget just, just the battle last night, the hours of, of sleeplessness, and then to, for Pastor Greg to even be in the room uh, right now in Hamilton is no, uh, is no small thing. And so uh, we're, we're actually, you know what, let's just pray right now. Father God, we stand right now for Pastor Greg and Vanessa. We stand for little Nate and Haley. And I thank you for your hand of healing and protection all around their lives. And uh, Lord God, uh, we just know and we always put our hope in the resurrection of Jesus. And so we thank you that upon that, upon that knowledge of the resurrection, that there is life and power and freedom for them. So Lord God, the stronger they are, the stronger the church is. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? And we pray for Pastor Jerry and Katie sitting right here as well. They feel it. They take it. You just, you, you're allowed to steal other people's prayers. Did you know that? When, whenever you hear someone getting like a word or a prayer or something, you can just say, yeah, I'm going to take that. That one's for me. Man, there's lots of good stuff going on in church life. One of the things is connect groups. And, uh, and uh, in our connect groups, what, what we've been doing is uh, a, uh, in Hamilton and here in Toronto, uh, if you've been joined to a connect group, uh, we gave all the connect groups, I think, how many connect groups is there, Pastor Jerry, across both of our locations? Like, yeah, something like nearly 50. Um, and so uh, <laughs> he said like 30. I think there's more. Um, but uh, I'm just believing there's more. And so, uh, 
but we gave each of the connect groups uh, part of the missions budget of the church, each of the connect groups $500 each uh, leading up to Thanksgiving for that group to be resourced, to be able to do something, to be able to minister in Hamilton and in Toronto. And, uh, and, and hearing the stories that are coming back of some creativity and what the groups are doing in order to uh, just, uh, it was around Thanksgiving and then even there's some groups that are still trying to coordinate just in the last month of how we're going to, how they're going to use that money and bless the city and love the city that they're in. And isn't that awesome? Isn't that cool? Yeah. I'm just going to throw that out there. How many times do you hear churches doing that? Not often. All right. It's good to be proud. And so uh, Gloria and Jonathan's group did some awesome stuff. They hit the streets and they felt after the message uh, where I was talking about how love is not just a feeling. Love is, love is a mission. Uh, to be a part of, and so they, that really hit their connect group strong, and as they were buying gift cards for people that they were meeting on the street, and, and people that looked like that they could really use a grocery gift card or, or something, um, two pe people really stood out that were actually praying prayers of their own, saying, um, you know, I, I really feel isolated and alone and feel like no one loves me, and one of them in particular said, in this moment, because of this moment, I feel like God sees me. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, I, would, I would invest $500 just for that one moment. And, uh, and then Heather and Brad Farrow in their group uh, did something. They uh, threw out a message on a Facebook group, on a mom's group, to just see what needs were coming up uh, to the Thanksgiving uh, season. And uh, it was something like 26 families responded and said, there is always need out there. Outside of the uh, confines of your own needs, there is needs out there. And sometimes it's a good exercise to provide the needs for someone else before you actually look for your own needs to be provided for. Actually, I would argue that there is a case uh, that, that your needs will be provided for when you only focus on others instead of yourself. I think that's a Bible thing. Um, and so... Anyway, there was two families in particular that um, one of the members of the group was dropping off groceries for Thanksgiving, and, uh, and two of these families, one, uh, two single moms, uh, one single mom had two sons and just really meaningful moment, and the other single mom had four, has, is looking after four kids for Thanksgiving. One of them has an eating disorder, and there's different things going on and dynamics in that family. But again, just as the groceries were being delivered, it wasn't, in fact, even the recipient's blessing, but uh, the person that delivered the groceries said this was the most fulfilling day of her life. <laughs> when we focus on others. Was that shopping spree at Yorkdale Shopping Center? Was that the most fulfilling day of your life? Or was it when you provided the needs for somebody else? Amen. Somebody give God some praise for Amen. Amen. I just love what the Connect Groups are doing. And you need, be, go to a Connect Group, be involved in a Connect Group in Hamilton. Get plugged in, get into a Connect Group, stay connected. We always talk about the three C's at C3. It's covering connection and contribution. And these are the things that cause people to thrive in church, being underneath someone and being covered by someone, having someone that can speak into your life, that knows the battles you face and can walk through them with you and knows the things that you're celebrating uh, and to stay connected to one another. You, isolation is the tool from the enemy. Isolation is never good. You need to stay connected. I need to stay connected. And as we stay connected, uh, that we can build each other's faith. And we all need that. And also a sense of contribution. These three factors will, if you don't have all three of these factors, uh, these are the reasons why people depart from a church and try and find something else. It's because, you know, a sense of contribution, that there is a vision and a mission that's greater than my own, and that I feel like I'm making a meaningful difference in that vision. And so as I feel like I can get under someone's leadership and I'm covered by that person and I'm connected with the body of Christ and I'm a part of a vision that's greater than my own, when those three things are cycling in church, the three C's of C3, you will find, and that's not what actually C3 stands for, by the way. I'm getting really confusing, aren't I? Um, it, C3 actually stands for Christian City Church. Uh, but uh, this is just a helpful way to remember that you, you find those needs in, in church life. And I'm telling you, you will be like, man, this is the greatest church season that I've ever been in because you're seeing these wheels turn in your life and actually causes you to thrive. Amen. You want to thrive in church? Yeah. Or do you want to hate going to church on Sunday? 
Anyone want to hate going to church on Sunday? Anyone want to waste time on Sunday? Anyone want what? Yeah, there's no one. There's no, there's no one in this room. Hopefully no one put their hand up in Hamilton. No, we all want to make sure that our time is well spent. And I've just gave you the keys to a, to a good church life. Amen? Amen. So this is a unique Sunday, just like last Sunday, where uh, I'm casting the vision of what our church is doing right now, and I'm inviting you to financially contribute in a significant way to that vision. If you're visiting, these are unique Sundays, these last Sunday and this Sunday. There is, there is so much for you to take on board from this message, even if you personally don't feel called to financially contribute into this vision. It is an invitation, okay? And all I'm asking you to do is do what Matt said on that video that we watched before, was to just respond to what God is inviting you to do. Listen to God, pray your own prayers, listen to God and respond to Him. And so if you're brand new to church, just understand that this is the type of Sunday that this is. We do this a couple of times throughout the year and, uh, and we invite people to, uh, to stretch and, and to sacrificially give uh, behind the vision. And if you, we have commitment cards. So if you're in Hamilton or here, you can raise your hand up and our host will get those to you. And we also have, I don't have one of the books in my hand. Um, does anyone have a, one of the books that actually, yeah, pass that to me. If you want one of these, you're on, man, on it. So if you're in Hamilton, raise your hand if you want one of these books. Uh, the, these, this basically outlines everything that I'm saying. All the numbers are in there, all the transparency is in there, and this is a good place to learn about what's going on in the life of this church. If you're in this room, raise your hand up at any time, and we'll get one of these to you. So is there anybody right now that wants one of these books? Anybody, somebody, somebody. Okay, cool. No one is interested in the vision of this church. All right, see ya, go home. No, I'm joking, I'm playing. All right, so raise your hand up at any time. Uh, so we're, what, where we're at right now as a church is um, God, we're in the middle of a miracle and God has done something really great uh, about purchasing a property and Jess and I shot a quick video uh, to show you this particular property and the renovation uh, stage that we're at right now. So um, just play this video on the screen. Enjoy in Hamilton, God bless you. All right, here we are right now standing in 322 Geary Avenue, right? The dream fulfilled right here on this ground. This is 330 Geary Avenue is right beside us. These two buildings, as you all know, is we own them as a church and just like 50 feet that way is where we were praying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for five years we did worship rehearsal and prayer there from seven every Thursday night. And so there's just such a significance in this area and a significance in these two buildings of prayer and worship, like already that's soaked in the place. And right. so it's beautiful. So it's like, there's a God story yeah. unfolding and even just standing in, I wish mm -hmm. everybody watching right now was literally standing with us because you can feel the presence right. of God and you can feel the sense of a God story unfolding it's here. It's true. This building is going to be used for the kingdom of God in some really amazing ways. Yeah, it feels very exciting. It feels very, you know, ground days of incredible future that is to come. And I mean, just over here, there's going to be like a cafe kind of welcome area. In. Yeah, walking in, we're going to Packing keep it, it really, Connecting. yeah, really simple, uh, trying to open it up as much as possible, make it feel so, so welcoming for anybody that comes in, whether they're part of our church community or maybe just a part of the greater community as right. well. This isn't just for our church community, it's to serve the Geary um, area as well and also all of Toronto. So. Right, so you can see it's already being gutted, like mm -hmm. taken out as much as we possibly could to try and get the architects involved, yeah. get the vision going. Get but it's going to be like bare bones, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're going to really try and keep it raw, mm -hmm. uh, but also modern and, and that in a way is going to be like a witness to the community. The community yeah. use space can come in here and we'll be able to yeah. rent it out and do different things. It's super exciting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, lots of different rentals will be able to use the space. Creatives will be able to use the space. I'm really excited as well for kids and for youth in the space. We'll be able to engage youth in hanging out with their friends and be able to really get them using their gift mix as well in this space, which has been hard to do in rental venues. So that's exciting for my mama's heart over here and yeah. Right, building people mm -hmm. to build the city. So right. people coming in here and 
Uh, you know, we, we can't use it right now as a church on mm-hmm. Sunday, but what we can do is so much. We can uh, do all the creative stuff that you said, but raising up leaders, leadership training, and as people are transformed and maturing in Christ, being sent out from this place to really impact every sector of society is like super key. So there's going to be offices here, there's going to be training spaces here, there's going to be a larger meeting room space that probably will accommodate around about 300 people to start. And it's a place where we can equip people, do training, basically everything a midweek hub space would take care of. And we're at the renovation stage right now. So exciting. And another great thing that we're going to be able to do in this space is our Love This City initiatives. Right. So not only can we uh, do the initiatives where we can pack different items for charities, but we can also invite the charities into this space to be able to use for their own uses as well. So it's a blessing. Because we're lacking so much warehouse room to be able to right. even accomplish that. Even so. just enough square footage for people to stand and pack things. Yeah, do, do things and in, in partner with the different charities. So. The location is amazing, like right in downtown. We've fought for this thus far. Mm -hmm. As a community, we've fought for this together. But God is not done. The story is still unfolding. And uh, we're really excited to see how this thing unfolds. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm going to be talking about faith today. And you and I, it is impossible to please God without faith. So whether you're relating this to the building per se, or you're relating this to your own life, to the miracle that you're believing for, to your marriage, to your relationships, to your finances, whatever it is, everything I'm talking about today relates directly to your Monday to Saturday. Don't zone out just because you don't think that you want to contribute or matter to this particular vision, because arguably what I'm preaching on today is the most important message that you will ever hear. Somebody say faith. Faith. So lean in, lean forward, take notes. Get out your phones and and there is going to be some awesome things, uh, awesome takeaways here to to do. So uh, so again, if you want to check this out about those buildings, raise your hand up and and we'll get one of those. The hosts are just going to be on standby the entire time. And I believe there are digital versions online. And so... uh, Last week, I want to just celebrate before I continue going on, uh, and you can turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. And last week, we, uh, there was a, uh, you know, there was a, contribu- uh, a contribution amount, and um, there is going to be buckets up the front at the end of this where we're going to take an opportunity to pray with you. And you might not be fully ready to do what you want to do today, and same in Hamilton, uh, but uh, you can just write like a number on the card and your name on the card, and it's a way to basically indicate uh, that uh, you want to stand with us and we stand with you in prayer for that, okay? So I'm just giving you a prompt as to what's going to happen at the end of the service, both here and Hamilton and online. Again, there are prayer rooms for you. Um, so back in March, when we originally presented this vision, a commitment of a little over a, uh, $1.1 million came in that some peop- some members of the church are already six months into that commitment. So you can see that $570,000 of that has already come in, which is a, basically we're on track, which is absolutely remarkable from March to March. And so you can also see uh, the additional number that came in from last week's commitments, $95,000 was committed last week. Now, mind you, that's till March, so, that's a, so that kind of represents $200,000 over the, over the uh, 12-month period, It's like because that's going to get given in six months, which is actually really quite uh, remarkable. So we're, so we're standing in this, together in this, and I'm just so proud of you uh, for how you're stepping in. And, and I have found that God has moved so much in my life. And I want to encourage you in Hamilton that as you step out in these areas, that, that God moves in this. It's, uh, money is such a tangible thing, and sometimes it takes a real tangible thing to actually see amazing, intangible things happen. If we keep everything in the clouds, sometimes it's hard to know exactly where God moves. And just testimony of faith is we've seen a lot go on. And so point one is faith is required in the middle. Somebody say in the middle. Faith is required in the middle. Faith is in the middle thing. You don't need faith at the end. Faith is in, in the middle thing. 
And this is where we are in the story. I have a little kind of um, uh, screen, hopefully, that tells you kind of where we are at in terms of the different miracles that we've seen on the way. So miracle number one is we had to raise a four and a half million dollar deposit. That's a massive miracle. Miracle number two, believe God for the right property. 330 Geary Avenue was where this church prayed every Thursday and did worship rehearsal for the first five years of our church. It's not any building. The fact that this building came up for sale, we had already soaked the building. It's a rehearsal factory, and a rehearsal space for bands, and that's where our worship band would rehearse for the first five years of our church plant here in Toronto. So that property came up for sale. There is no coincidences under heaven, guys. And then so other miracles, we had to negotiate the transaction. Then we had to, that was difficult. Then we had to close the deal. Oh my gosh, closing this deal, there was so much opposition against a a church owning this property. There was a petition written against our church, the public that we were in news media. There was a whole bunch of that. These are all chapters that we have already gone through. Somebody say in the middle. Then we had to close the deal. Oh, I said that. Then design and permit. Well, that's not a big deal. Um, But, and so it's kind of like the you are here. This is where we're at right now. So we're in the middle. And uh, we got to rent, so we're going to renovate the first phase. That's what we're talking about right now. And those rent, we're, engineers are just signing off on the drawings right now. And we're just about to get into that renovation. Then we have to obtain zoning. That is going to be a massive miracle because we're renovating the brown property and we can use it straight away without any zoning transition. But in order to use the red property, we have to get zoning to add place of worship to that. And I'm telling you, there's a fight that's ahead of us. And it's not a fight of flesh and blood. It's a spiritual fight. And as a church, we got to be standing. I'm telling you, this is significant. As a church taking ground, it's significant for Hamilton because there is a key that will turn in the supernatural that will unlock future locations. That As we do this and as we align in this, that something will unlock and transact in the supernatural that we believe that will unlock future locations all around Ontario. So it's not just about Toronto. Then we got to rent it. Once we get the zoning, we'll renovate that building the second phase and then occupying it and, and we'll see the completion of a story. Faith is in the middle. Hope is our message, love is our motivation, but faith is our means. And that is for your life too. Hope is the message that you and I carry in our heart. The Bible is a story of hope. Love is the motivation to take it to the ends of the earth. But the means to get there and the means to achieve anything of God's promise in your life and in my life requires faith. Somebody say faith. Faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse one says, now faith is the substance of, in the middle of things hoped for in the future and the evidence in the middle. It doesn't say that. I'm adding that in. That's my, that's my own little parentheses. Uh, evidence in the middle of the things not yet seen in the future. So God has a word for your life now that you're not currently experiencing. And the way to rope a lasso around your future and appropriate it to become reality is faith. Somebody say in the middle. So we can see in Hamilton, we can see revival taking place. The evidence of a move of God in the city of Hamilton is upon us right now. And you're like, Sam, well, we're not actually standing in a revival and we're not actually, yes, we are. Because faith sees the evidence of the future that we're not yet experiencing. And I know it to be true. The question is, do you? Do you see it to be true? Do you see hundreds and thousands of people gathering together? Do you see hundreds of people? I see a room of a thousand people in Hamilton in no too short of time. It requires faith and it requires obedience and it requires leadership because faith is the means. Amen. And Abraham was in the middle. Hebrews chapter 11 is this story of all these people Uh, very average people that believed in faith. And Abraham was one of these listed in Hebrews chapter 11, verse eight and nine. It says, by faith, somebody say faith. Faith. Abraham, when called to go to a future, when called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went. Here's the key line. 
even though he did not know where he was going, by faith he made his home in the promised land. By faith he made his home in the future, like a stranger in a foreign country. And this is referring to Genesis chapter 12. And last week I talked about Jacob's ladder from Genesis chapter 28. Jacob, when he came to Jacob, this moment where heaven came to earth and Jacob had that uh, sleeping dream that he awoke to, that was the same geographical location of Genesis chapter 12 where God gave his covenant to Abraham. So Jacob happened to stop in a miracle that he was asleep to that he didn't even know was the place of covenantal blessing where God said in Genesis chapter 12, I will make you a fruitful father of many nations. And Jacob happened to breast his head in that geographical location. And when he became aware of it, no wonder he said, this is none other than the house of God. Because there is something that God promised generations ago, and we're in the middle of fulfilling that promise, church. We're in the middle of fulfilling God's covenant blessing. Amen. He was 75 years old. And God says in in Genesis chapter 12, He says, go to the place that I will show you. Can you imagine, you imagine if I said, hey, just start stepping into the future that you don't know yet. That is what it means to walk by faith. That is what it means to live by faith. He says that even though he did not know where he was going, by faith he made his home in the promised land. We're in the middle of a story, church. Number two, we're called to make our home in God's promise. Make our home, make, what is a home? A home is a settlement. A home, a home is a place of identity. A home is a place of, of um, security. It's a, it's a place of, of, of this is where I identify as my comfort place. That's the home. And God says, in order to live this life the way God is calling you to live this life, is you should not make home where you are, you should make home where you're going. So right now, I'm addicted to drugs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying right now, you might be addicted to drugs. Right now, you might be in a, in a horrible marriage. Right now, you might be, you know, struggling in economy. Right now, whatever it is you're going through. And I'm saying, but no, don't make your identity where you currently are. Right now, I'm addicted to drugs. That's not your home location. That's not your identity. Right now, I am free. That is where I'm going. I make my home in the promise. I don't make my home in my current circumstances. You are gonna stay in your current circumstances if that is where your identity is. But God said to Abraham, I know your identity is 75 years old. I know your identity is you don't have any children. But if you make your home in my word, you are gonna go from a place of where you do not have kids, where you were barren in your life, and you're gonna go to a place of fruitful promise that will be appropriated into your current circumstances because you make your home in the promise and not in where you currently are right now. Too many of us get taught to settle and to be too complacent of where we currently are and we wonder why we're not moving anywhere. We got to make a home in our destiny and that's what faith does. And so home is the familiar and too many of us are familiar with our current battles. And I'm telling you, stop focusing on your current circumstances. Stop being so familiar with your current reality and become more familiar with God's Word for your future reality. The question is, where are you home and where are you a stranger? Too many Christians stop in their life because they're home in their current circumstances and they're a stranger to God's Word. Flip the script, church. Somebody in Hamilton say, flip the script. I'm prophesying to you right now. Put home in your future and become a stranger to your current reality. Say, I'm a foreigner here. I'm an alien to these addictions. I'm an alien to these struggles. I'm an alien to this broken, busted up, destroyed identity. I'm an alien to this. Why? Because God is resurrected. Because God has set me free. I know I'm not currently there, but faith is the evidence of things hoped for. And I know I need to not settle where I currently am. 
If this church doesn't become strange to its current existence, we will never experience the home of revival of tomorrow. But my heart is settled. My heart is settled with multiple locations. My heart is settled with multiple buildings. My heart is settled that we will occupy this building. My heart is settled on the future of tomorrow. So it feels kind of strange in the reality that we're in right now. It feels kind of strange that revival hasn't broken out across Canada right now because in my heart, in the vision of the belly of my spirit, revival is breaking out. Revival is breaking out. Why? Because we're in the middle. I preach myself happy. You can have that home. You can start that business. You can get healthy. You can deal with that fear. You can get that marriage back. You can rebuild that family. You can establish that new destiny. Why? Because hope is our message. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the resurrection gives us the power to believe. Amen. Number three, I'll move on because I feel like you got that point. Faith knows God can see what I can't. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Faith knows that God can see. He said, Genesis 12 verse 1, go to the land that I will show you. It was clear that God could see something that he couldn't. What can God see about your life that you can't? What can God see about future promises that he has for you that you can't? Is God's ways higher? than yours? Is God's thoughts higher than yours? Let me ask you another way. Are you God? When we make ourselves gods, then our future is limited by our own understanding. But when we humble ourselves as human beings before God, then our future becomes unlimited because His understanding is higher than ours. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 40 said, God had planned something better for us. God had planned something better for us. I'm telling you that you are walking into a better future. You are walking into something better that you wouldn't even dream of or comprehend or imagine. My life is a testimony of that. I, if, if my life was going to be determined on who I was growing up, who I was as a teenager, who I was in my early 20s, who I was even in my early 30s. It's like, I don't know, I don't understand how this keeps working, but I got born again and, and, and became a Christian and started following God by faith and my life has somewhat become unlimited. And it's just because I understand the fact that it's not based on my own abilities. It's not based on who I am. I'm a super ordinary, average person. And you probably are too. And I think it's actually a blessing that I am quite average because if I thought I was any better than I was, maybe I'd struggle to actually place my faith in God. So there's some gifted people in this room that need to be reminded that you're not that good. Because I think, I think we just think we're so great and then we get so great to the point that we feel like we don't need God. That's a real dangerous position to be in. God can see more than you. Kenzie has this, my six-year-old, she has this thing in our car. She always has to have the blue line on the map. Always has to know, Daddy, type in the desk. I could be going to the place, I could be going to church. I mean, we're there every Sunday. I don't need a map to get me to church. And, uh, and she just, there, there's an element of control that we all have. We all just need to know how many minutes and when's it going to come and what's the future hold. And it's like God's GPS doesn't work like that. He says, start driving and I'll type the destination in and I'm the only one that can see it. That's walking by faith. And, and, and you know, I remember this time when she was younger and Kenzie's just me, a little girl version of me. I'm a control freak. Like Kenzie's like basically a clone of me, just a girl. And, uh, and, and, and when we were younger, she was playing with stones. Um, you know, we're on our way to the park and I'm telling you that God can see your future better than you. God knows better than you. God, God you gotta trust that God is bigger than you. Even the current thing that you're doing right now might not be the thing that you're gonna be doing later. I grew up playing drums, it's all I did. I just, I honestly wanted to be a Christian rock star. <laughs> 
And then, you know, I don't do that anymore. And God might totally change the trajectory of your life. And that we trust that he can see greater than us. She's playing with stones in the curb and I'm like, Baby, I'm taking you to this, this park's awesome. There's like colorful swings and slides and spinny things and all this cool stuff that you can play in. And, in this. and she, she just was so determined to try and find rocks in the curb on the side of a highway. And I know that that's a dangerous place. And I know that that's not as fun as what she's going to experience. And I know that I'm taking her to a destination. If she could just let go of those stinking rocks in that stinking curb, against the stinking highway, maybe that's your life right now. What are you trying to hold on to that you think is the greatest? And God's like, man, if you would just let go of that and just hold my hand and keep walking, around the corner is something so much greater. God can see greater than you and I. And and, and He says, go to the land that I'll show you. And this was kind of like planning the church. You're called to do it, but don't know how to. And that, is, and that is what walking by faith is. We always talk about faith is a leap. There is no verse in the Bible that says anything about faith being a leap. It's not a leap. The Bible teaches us is that we walk by faith. Do you know what walking looks like? This is my next step. It's my next step. Walking, faith, faith is not trusting God. <laughs> now you're awake. <laughs> I saw her shooting me right there. I was like, I'm going to give you a real. If we think that's all Christianity is, we, we get paralyzed because most of us are r- riddled with fear. That's not what it is. What's your word, God? Okay, I got it. What's your next word? God, okay, I got it. Word, obedience, step. Word, obedience, step. Word, willingness, obedience, step. That is what Christianity is. It's just what's, I think this is your word, willingness, obedience. Oh, wait, bummer, that wasn't it. Course correction. God is all good. He's a redeemer. I'm glad you stepped anyway. How about I take you this way? Ah, that's what you were trying to say. That is Christianity, walking by faith. And that's all I'm asking you to do today. I'm not asking you to like, empty my bank account and give, I'm I'm gonna give a million dollars. Have you given 10 yet? Like, just take a next step. Give a next step, amen. How many people love it when the pastor gets animated? I wonder if that translated across to Hamilton. Hopefully, hopefully it did. <laughs> yeah. Um, number four, the lesson of faith is to teach us to have greater faith. Are these helpful? Number four, the lesson of faith is to teach us to have greater faith. You know, something that I was just reading up on recently, which is kind of a bit funny, but I am a dad. Is, um, is the fascination of the rules of storytelling that Pixar uh, animation put into their stories. Because Pixar are known as the greatest storytellers in, in animation film. And you know, Pixar films like Toy Story, like Finding Nemo. Anyone? Somebody? Yeah, you, you can watch them even if you don't have kids. You know that? Like, you, you're allowed. Um <laughs> And, uh, and, and they obsess, and there's 21 rules that Pixar put into every one of the stories. And, and as you distill them down, one of the things they do is they try and the main character is there, there is a lesson that the main character is learning in the story. And, and there, there is a challenge or whatever it is. And so, you know, in Toy Story, and, and, and the challenge is often an emotion. It's a real emotion that you get attached to. And in Toy Story, it was Woody's jealousy. He was jealous that there's a new toy. Anyone seen Toy Story? Okay. Yeah, jealous that there's a new toy. And we're like, yeah, like I relate, you know, like there's someone, something new that comes into life or whatever. And, uh, and in Inside Out, it was 
Joy, Joy is the main character and, and it's her, her denial of negative emotions and Inside Out is about the embracing of all emotion. And, and then finding Nemo, it's Nemo who feels like he's crippled with like a little fin and he's, but he's adventurous in his spirit and his dad is controlling and the main character is actually Marlon, his dad, um, who has to trust. And, but a new, and then there's always a new character in the Pixar films that comes in and that helps teach the story and Dory is the new character. This is, is this like so daddy and nerdy? It's, it's great, right? I'm giving it to you today. I'm jumping off the stage and I'm talking about Pixar. And so, but, but Dory comes along and she's like, you know, just has this faith, like childlike faith. Just, it's going to be good. Just keep swimming. And, and faith that kind of has a forgetful memory. And it's like, and it's this, and they've weaved it in to be like, right, it is, life is an adventure, and Marlon needs to know to, like, to let go of control, and that, that can, and this, this element of trust, and, and in Christianity, God is the main character of our story, and there's a lesson that he's always trying to teach us when we're in the middle, and the lesson that he's trying to teach this church, as the pastor of this house, as the pastor here in Toronto and in Hamilton, that what is the lesson? of this Pixar animation thing that's unfolding that we're in the middle of this story. The lesson is a lesson about the main character and the main character is God. And the lesson is, as you step out and you be a part of His story, the lesson is to trust Him. That you can ultimately trust God's voice. And, and faith's lesson is to have greater faith and trust in God, is the revelation that God's word can be trusted. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20 say, 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And you're on this story of trust, this journey of trust, and I'm gonna get the band back up. And that takes me to point five, is God is looking to us, which is crazy, to complete his story. At the end of Hebrews 11 is these two verses and it's an invitation. Hebrews 11 is an invitation. There are all these stories of faith. Um, you know, for example, like the Israelites going through the Red Sea, David defeating Goliath, all these guys, the, the army that took down Jericho, Daniel shutting up the lions, Noah building a huge ark in the mockery of the region around him. And that can be kind of used as a metaphor of us building the church. Samson being the ultimate judge, Gideon defeating an army with only 300 soldiers. 18 specific examples Hebrews gives us and then a list of countless names. Of all, and then it ends with these two verses. It ends, it says, these all were commended for their faith. And I'm inviting you to be a hero of faith. A hero of faith. All of these were commended for their faith, yet none of them had received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us, so that only together with C3 Hamilton, so only together with those of you watching online, so that only together with everybody here in the room in Toronto, that only together with us would they be made perfect. God has a story. And in the context of eternity, your life, my life, is in the middle. And Hebrews 11 is this amazing invitation. And, and we refer to it as the story of the heroes of faith. But when you read that, the Bible doesn't want you to read that and say, they are heroes of faith, how great they were. Well, I don't know about me, I'm not that great. Because the true story of Hebrews 11 is all of these people had faults. All of these people weren't that great. All of these people were insignificant, but they placed their faith in the middle. And God has suspended our story of occupying a property. God has suspended us and taking us through the steps of the story to devise a narrative for a lesson to be learned that we can trust in God's Word and we should only trust in God's Word. There is nothing else for us to place the hold of our trust on. And God wants to teach you that lesson and me that lesson, but it takes you and I to take a step of faith. It takes you and I to opt in to the story of God's narrative across eternity and say, I wanna play my part. 
I want to put my hand to the plow. I want to say yes to His Word on my life. I want to put my home in His future. I want to let let go of control. I feel too at home in my comfort zone and I want to let go of this place that ought to be foreign to me. The place of control, the place of I'm trying to work it all out, the place that everything relies on me and hinges on my ability to muscle through. I'm going to become a stranger to this identity now. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. So this is an invitation right now for you to be making your home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. I'm trying to, Jess and I are trying to lead in the example by this and we are constantly exercising faith and making our home in the promise that we see. I see it so vividly, but it really doesn't matter what I see, it matters what we see. That's why I need to get up here and cast the vision of what I believe God is calling this community to do. Because that only together with us, wouldn't it be great if the Bible said, yeah, I'm so, I'm so grateful that Sam pick and obeyed, now God's promises are all fulfilled. No, only together with us, only together with you, only together with you watching online. Just because you're tuning in online, doesn't give you permission to opt out of God's story. God is looking for the next step, that next step, the next thing of obedience. How is He speaking to you? How is He working in your life? So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to transition it over to Hamilton and Pastor Greg can lead the final part of the service where uh, there are going to be people down the front and you can come forward, Hamilton, And you're responding to God and you're saying, I feel like this is my part to play. I'm going to be a hero of faith in this way. And I'm going to take my next step in this way because faith has eyes to see in the middle. So I'm going to just, let me just pray for you guys actually before it fully transitions. Father, I just pray for C3 Hamilton. I thank you so much for the future that we see. I thank you that faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Right now, in your name, Jesus, bless every person that decides to be a hero of faith this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, for everybody in the room, we just, uh, you guys can get it ready. People that are going to pray for you can come up the front. And these people, all they're doing, they're not going to be looking at what you're giving. And that only goes to our administrative clerk. I don't see it. Nobody, we don't, we always stay arm's length to this. This is a personal thing between you and God. And you might not be fully like entering the whole card out. Some of you might be. Some of you might want to pray about it. Some of you were praying about it last week. And you, some of you were praying about it last week and you're coming back this week. Um, all the people that are praying, come down the front. Come down the front. These are trusted pastors and ministers that, um, and all they want to do is you should never be standing alone. If you need a card, lift up your hand. And we're going we're gonna to walk this out together. And I'll say it again. I'm asking you to respond with what God is speaking to you about. And maybe the most courageous thing you can do today is even pray that prayer. Lord, Some of us even have fear to pray the prayer that God might actually say, yeah, I do want you to give something. So we just don't pray it. You know, you can only hide in that corner for so long. At some point, God's gonna speak to you about stretching faith. At some point, God's gonna reach out to you and He's gonna talk to you about, maybe not this particular thing, but our Christian life has to end up being a fully surrendered, God, you can access all areas of my life. And this journey of faith and your journey of faith and we're partnering with you and they're just gonna pray a quick prayer. They're just gonna say, God, I pray for this person. I stand with them as they journey in faith and we're walking this out together. Amen. Amen. Hey, I just wanna, I just wanna honestly from the depth of my heart say what we're seeing coming to pass in our church and what we have seen already is so miraculous. And when I tell this story to other people ministers and other pastors as to what is unfolding through the life of C3 Toronto and C3 Hamilton and and the work of God in this ministry, people are truly mind blown. Even the lender 
that we've partnered with, the one that helped get the, the one that gave us the mortgage, that lender toured our building last week and just is like, what do you guys need next? Like, we, we, let's go again. Let's do, do it again. We've been faithful and we're good. And, and 330 Geary Avenue, I mean, it's all in here. You got to get the book. So I have to explain less on stage. Um, we've leased out 330 Geary Avenue and that's covering its own expenses and all the rest of it. But the truth is, is this is a trust exchange between you and God. That's really what it's about. You're not giving because the vision's good, although the vision's good. You're not giving because I preached this message, even though this message was a great message. You're not preaching because I jumped off the stage and nearly broke my face. No, you're not giving because I... You're giving because you're listening to God and you're taking your next step and you're gonna discover something about the hero of your story. That's it. I want you to discover something about the hero of your story. God loves you. He can be trusted. He should be trusted. And He wants to be trusted. Will you trust Him? Amen. Just so I'm very clear, this is the close to today's service. The band are going to keep playing. You can come down for prayer. But if you need to leave and you need to go, um, while the song's playing, go be about your day. Come back to Next Steps. I say we'll start Next Steps in about 10 minutes, in about 10 minutes, and it goes for about 10 minutes. So, um, so I'm just gonna close, I'm gonna pray and close the service and I'm gonna let the band play, um, but you're released. Um, go, party on. Let's, uh, let's be, about, be about the story of God. So stand to your feet, everybody. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord God, for the journey of nine years that you've already brought us on. I thank you so much for the heroes of faith in the Bible and that you're inviting us to be about that story. You're inviting us to be a part of that story. I thank you so much, Lord God, for the people in this church and for the faithfulness that's represented here. And I thank you so much, Jesus, that you look down upon that faithfulness and you're so proud of this house. And we trust you, God. We trust you for what's coming next. We're having faith in the middle. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen.